a classic retrofit LED panel. But if I zoom in, you can effectively see that the original circuitry was the little buck regulator they commonly use, the little inductor and the switching circuit. But something has changed, but the packaging hasn't. If I open this up, you can instantly see that all that stuff shown in the front of the packaging is missing. So I'm going to plug this into the hoppy and we'll analyse its power output. Well, it's electrical characteristics as opposed to its power output. Because it doesn't really output power, it outputs photons. Right, I'm going to plug this in now. And it's going to be bright. Is it going to be flickery? Yes, it's going to be flickery. Uh, my apologies for the flicker. That is because there's no smoothing. And they could have added smoothing. The power is... 17 watts. The power factor is 0.9, which is very good. Current 77 milliamps. Okay, let's open it up and take a look inside. That is annoyingly flickery. So the concept behind this type of light is it's designed for those bulkhead ceiling fixtures that are made, they've got a pressed steel back and they've got the plastic front that just being it caps on. And there are magnets in this, and it's designed that you basically just hook it up to the wiring and then stick it to the metal somewhere in that. Not great, but uh, it's a common thing. It appears to be very common in China for their classic little bulkheads that everybody seems to have in their homes. So there are uh, the magnets are the bit that holds this together, in the sense that they have this little push-in plastic rivet. There are also screw holes, but they've not used them. So if I push all the magnets out then the thing will separate into the circuit board and the plastic housing. That's a new thing, the plastic housing, because it used to be you just had a bare panel like this with live connections all over it. That shows that the circuitry has evolved. Well, tell you what, I'll give you a close-up of this. Uh, the circuitry has evolved to the two linear current regulators, and then we'll try and hack it and see what we can do with this. One moment, please. The reverse engineering didn't take too long, so let's explore. Live and neutral coming in. We've got a bridge rectifier. There is the facility to have a resistor across there, presumably for providing a slight load to avoid ghost glow when the switches are off through capacitive coupling between the switch wires. And then we've got these MLS3535A. I did not find any information on those at all. I could see pictures of them, but not actually a data sheet. And these are simple linear current regulators, and they're quite odd because the the way it's wired, the positive from the bridge rectifier goes out to LEDs and then uh, the current flows through all the LEDs and then comes back via these regulators, which there's two in parallel, to the negative. Why didn't they? Why did they run the positive track beneath the rectifier when they could have improved clearance by actually running it that way and run the LEDs in the opposite direction? I do not know why they did that. Uh, here is the schematic. It's not that exciting, uh, but we'll hack it. Uh, if I zoom down this, we have the incoming supply, the bridge rectifier. We get a very humpy 340 volts with no smoothing, which is why those flicker. We've got uh, 12 LEDs in series times four, and each of those LEDs appears to have nine chips, giving about 300 volts, and then it's current limited. So really, these LEDs are lighting fairly close to the top of the sine wave, which is why they're very flickery. Uh, the current sense resistor, the easiest hack in this is just probably to chop one of these resistors off and that would half the power because it would just be one current regulator and that would just be the easiest thing, but it wouldn't stop it flickering. What I'm thinking of doing is, as an alternative to that, uh, if I just remove a bit of track here and here with a Tipex corrector, which is just not working at all. Excellent. It normally works quite well. It's just made a huge mess. Excellent. What I'm thinking of doing is adding a capacitor in line with a resistor across it to, for discharge. I'm not actually going to probably put that in just out of laziness. Uh, and then a 10 ohm resistor to limit inrush current. And I'm robbing that out of a existing kit. Uh, then I'm going to put uh, a capacitor across here for 0.7 microfarad, 400 volts, to be honest. Yeah, that's about the right value. Uh, and I've got a choice here. I could put in a real capacitor from, well, a capacitor from a local supplier. Or I could use one that came a little Chinese kit for a lamp, which is a much smaller capacitor and kind of disposable. It's not something I'd use in a critical application. So I'm going to go with this. 
So initially, I'm going to try it without the capacitor just to see what happens with uh, the capacitor, this uh, limiting capacitor. And I'm going to use 470 nano initially, just because that's what I have in that LED lighting kit. So I'm going to get this out of the way. I'm going to bring it in and I have already added the capacitor in series and the resistor here, but I have not tried it yet. I thought I'd save that for when you were here. So let's grab the hoppy, stuff the capacitor in, say, we'll put this one in here. Noting that this will all be live when I do this. So uh, quite spicy, I'm not going to touch it though. And we'll see what the power changes to. So it's still going to flicker, so flicker alert. No, it's a lot dimmer. It's an awful lot dimmer. It's actually it's gone down to 3 watts, which isn't bad actually. That's a uh, fairly typical, I mean it's a lot less, but it is flickering. Let's see how that changes. So that's almost 3 watts on the button. Uh, power factor is 0.5, that's what you'd expect. 22 milliamps. Tell you what, I'm going to add the capacitor now. So I'm going to unplug this. I'm going to disconnect these. I'm going to... Uh, bridge this capacitor before I get a zap off it, owing to my laziness. There was a little pop. Mm -hmm. That's why you put a discharge resistor across it. Then I'm going to brighten things up here, because it does make sense to brighten things up. Oh, that swamped that out, but that doesn't really matter. And because this is an aluminium substrate PCB, I'm going to bring an absolute beast of a soldering iron. It's the little one that has that fetching 500... Uh, degrees Celsius output, which makes it kind of suited to this type of application. So I'm going to solder onto these pads that I have kind of pre-tinned. I'm going to crop this down. And it's interesting that they didn't add a capacitor. It would have been so easy for them to add it. And if you think they did it because of thermal reasons, then I don't really see a reason for that because the original unit used to have a capacitor. I'm looking for the solder. I have misplaced the solder. Just give me a sec, I'm going to grab some more. I will find the other solder later. So I'm going to tin these pads. Try and solder on the correct way around. That would be dramatic. Yes, I know you want me to solder on the wrong way around. It's always more popular. But this is a scientific experiment. So it's being done correctly. So I'm going to solder that one on there. If I can solder on there. It is such a high mass solder joint. And this one on here. Uh, the aluminium substrate wants to take the heat away from that instantly. So this capacitor is now soldered on, and I'm just going to gently fold it back this way so it just floats in thin air. Double check the polarity, right? Tell you what, I'll bring back the hoppy back in again now. And we'll see if that's changed. It shouldn't flicker now. Has the power changed? So I'm putting that one in there, putting that one in there. Flicker alert, just in case, but to be honest, I don't think it's going to flicker, not unless it makes one big bang and flickers. Uh, nothing whatsoever. That's kind of worrying. That kind of suggests that I've probably not got the wire trapped in the connector, probably. Hopefully. Either that or the capacitor is uh, shunting. Oh, there we go. Uh, no flicker. And now, 2.5 watts. Okay, so can I go better? Can I put a bigger capacitor in, like one microfarad? One moment, please. The one microfarad capacitor is now on. Let's try this out. I have not tried this yet. Uh, are you ready? So this is with one microfarad. Uh, the power of it has now gone up to 5.5 watts, which is actually pretty useful. It's putting a lot of light out um, with no flicker. That's good. Now, there is one other thing I can do here. And that is to remove the capacitor from the series circuit. Let's short that out just in case it's holding enough to current to hurt me. Oh, there was a little pop. It depends where it is in the sine wave, whether it actually stings you or not. So I'm going to reflow that solder. I'm going to leave the 10 ohm resistor in. But what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to snip off one of these resistors on the circuit board. I'm just going to get a pair of side cutters and I'm going to brutally just chop one off. Uh, which is the most accessible? That is the most accessible. That's it off. So that's now one of these current regulators is now out of action, theoretically. And I 
have rectified it and smoothed it, so it'll be interesting what happens. I mean, this is where there could be a bit of a angry confrontation. We'll find out when I plug it in. So the power is now 14 watts. What was it before? Was it 17? But that is all being regulated via one chip on that board. Uh, and that chip may get kind of hot and it may self-regulate down. I see it already self-regulating down. I think I can see the power rating. It's now down to 12 watts. So it's not that happy because it's now putting so much, it's now dealing with so much power dissipation that uh, the chip is getting hot enough to actually self-regulate down to protect itself. It actually limits the current itself. Right, tell you what, I'm going to pause for a moment. We'll see how far it goes down or if it just blows up. One moment, please. So the chip is throttling back. It's showing a temperature of about, well, 77 degrees. The current is stabilised about 10.5 watts. Well, the power is stabilised at 10.5 watts. And the temperature is kind of dropping in this. Well, it's hovering, I suppose. 75, 77 degrees, roughly. It's kind of that maybe is it self-regulating position. It's temperature. Well, that's kind of interesting. Um... So I suppose that is a fix. The other fix we can do here, I'm going to unplug this, it's gainishly bright. The other fix we can do here, uh, that capacitor will actually hold a charge as well. Let's see if we can short to the electrolytic out. Eh, yeah, it'll pop off that as well. The other thing we could do here to regulate this further is the resistors on the circuit board could be changed to higher values. And if they were changed to higher values, so this was by default uh, regulating, then you could add the capacitor. So say, for instance, doubling the value of these resistors to 22 ohms would uh, have an effect on the actual power dissipation of these as well. It would reduce the intensity LEDs and compensate for the addition of the capacitor. Uh, so many things you could do. Whether you should do them is debatable, because let's face it, it's just a generic, cheapy, crappy LED panel. Uh, but interesting, they've really basically skimped on everything with this panel. They've taken the original driver circuitry and just said, how cheap can we make it? And it would have been nice if they'd basically just, uh, if they'd said, we'll just be sense about this. They could have maybe configured the LEDs in a different way. They could have added the smoothing capacitor and changed the value of those resistors. But maybe they just want them to burn out. You know what the lamp manufacturers would like. But there we go. It's an interesting product. It is hackable. Uh, but to be honest, it's not that great, but still worth playing about with and experimenting with. Bonus extra footage. Just experimentally, I've got two 22 ohm resistors and I have soldered them because these uh, pins here are common and they're this Ascense pin, I've actually put the solder directly on here and soldered resistors uh, and then tapped it onto the negative pin of the capacitor just to actually make it easier to put them on. And I've done that with both of them. So that's two resistors like that going onto the capacitor. And then I've removed the other resistor. So that's two 22 ohm resistors. I've not tried this. This could all end dramatically. But let's stick it into the hoppy and see what happens. See what power we get. Hopefully it won't be mega power with a loud bang, which sometimes happens. Uh, so I'm plugging it in now. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. What are we getting? What are we getting? We're getting 17 watts. Isn't that what we had before? But this time, there's no flicker. Okay, uh, maybe you could go higher with the resistors then, maybe go to 33 ohms with those to actually tame it down. But uh, that is a huge improvement over what it was before. So there are many ways you could hack these. Uh, I'm just going to double check that capacitor is discharged. Yeah, it'll pop off that. Yes, I'd rather it was a pop off that, not a pop when my fingers touched it. But yeah. It's an interesting little panel. Uh, we can finish the job for them by basically doing what they should have done in the first place. And that kind of makes it better.